This week on Lead One, Poverty Curse Broken with Dr. Roberta Hosky. Welcome to the Lead One Podcast, where our mission is to lead leaders through leadership. The goal is to get 1% better every day. Let's see what Drew and the guys have to say. All right, welcome back to Lead One Podcast. Uh, I've got the crew with us this morning, Brandon, Franz, and Sam Buck. What up? We have, uh, guys, we have got a treat for you this week. We are joined this morning by Dr. Roberta Hosky. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. We and we, we've got Roberta in the in the studio with us, all the way from New Haven, Connecticut. Um, for those of you that don't know her, just a brief introduction. Um, she's a real estate broker, author of the book "Poverty Curse Broken" and media personality. She's the president and CEO of Outreach Realty Servicing and Outreach School of Real Estate, as well as the Thousand Black Families National Home Ownership Program. She's also the founder of International Millionaire Mindset Sisterhood. So, listen, we we are so glad that you're with us this morning, and can't wait to to talk about um, the the poverty curse, and and then more importantly, breaking that. Mm-hmm. I, I'd like to start with. What what is the poverty curse or or maybe mindset is another word for that. Mm-hmm. So um, the poverty curse or the poverty mindset, whichever way you want to look at it, it is something that many people battle. Some people battle it knowing that they battle it, and some people battle the poverty curse and not know what it is. So basically, anytime you are not living to the way that you know you can live. If you're living under a life of limitations, that's part of poverty. Um, Anytime uh, you have a lack, opposite of poverty as well, right? Anytime there's lack, that's poverty. But we say mindset because what I've learned in my life as I broke, was on a journey of breaking the poverty curse is that we as humans are very powerful. As we think, as the Bible says, as a man thinketh, so is he. And so our thoughts have power. So people who are in poverty, um, they have a poverty mindset. People who are wealthy have a wealth mindset. It's just a way of thinking that produces results in our life. Okay. So... How, what is your advice on changing that way of thinking? One, you know, no one, and this is why I love what we're doing here on this podcast. I I love what you guys are doing, um, illuminating leadership and, and asking these questions that we're having that like today, you know, how can you change it? What I know for sure is that there's no one that can change something that they don't see. It's impossible to do that. So the podcast like you're doing today is illuminating the the um, the people who may have the poverty mindset. First, you got to recognize that there's something wrong here. You have to first recognize, you know what? I don't know why I I want to be a millionaire. I want to own houses. I want to be financially free. I want to sign my own paychecks. I have the ability to do it. Why have I not done it? Right. And so you got to start asking yourself those hard questions and then be real with yourself and then listen to the inner conversation that you have. Mindset is invisible. There is a whole battleground going on in everybody's mind. It's like I remember the cartoons growing up. You had the good um, voice over here and that bad voice over here. If you can ill it, if you can see that in your head, then that's exactly what's going on in our mind. We have those thoughts of wealth and abundance and, and being who we really are destined to be. And then you have that voice over here saying, you know what, you're, 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 you're not right for this or you're not educated enough or look at your family. You know, you're black. You, you know, come on, you, you slice up your verbs. You know, you're not fit for this. And so it's an internal battle. So in order to win, Drew, the battle of your life, you must first win the battle of your mind. And so that's what we have to do. We have to, number one, realize there's a whole conversation going on and it's involuntary. Nobody's in here just saying, oh, let me just talk to myself. Like this is involuntary, but you have to realize it. And then you have to stop the negative conversations that you're having and substitute the negativity with positivity and then move on those things, move on those emotions. So let's, let's maybe back up just a second. Mm -hmm. Obviously uh, you come from very humble beginnings um, from what I know, at least Mm -hmm. was, 
a question I have for you is, was there a specific moment that opened your eyes to there's more um, or that you could you could break the mold? Absolutely. There was a time in, it, in life, and this is why I want our listeners to know that in life, some of the worst times and the hardest times of your life is at the break of the best changes and the most illuminating time of your life. It's all how you look at it. You know, again, that goes to poverty mindset and wealth mindset. The wealth will always see the positive in any situation. But here's the situation. I was um, recently removed from the shelter, and it's in my book, Poverty Curse Broken. And being in a sh- homeless shelter as a teenager is not a good thing, and that's where I was at. Very emotional, um, very feeling abandoned, um, you know, crying. And there's a lot of things that go on in those shelters. And um, and i never forget my godparents um, came and took me out to shelter, and they came and they signed me out. And I, I was telling my cousin Brandon, I still get emotional uh, when I tell my story because it's so real, even though it was so a while ago. They came and took me out to shelter and they brought me home with them. Now, I'm a girl from the projects um, when they was really projects. Now they look cute. <laughs> <laughs> and they don't have roaches no more. <laughs> or water bugs. <laughs> but um, they took me out of the shelter and they brought me into their home. And you know what, Drew, that was the first time I was inside a single family house. I had never been inside a single family house. I've only known apartments. I've only known projects. I've only known that. And I never knew that you could live in a house that had a bathroom in it, in your bath, in your bedroom. Wow. I never saw that. I never knew that you could walk inside a closet. And my godmother took me and she was intentional about showing me what I've never seen. And I remember her saying to me, she says, honey, you do not have to be a product of your environment. You can do whatever you put your mind to. Now, the other thing that is so powerful is that um, we relate. People relate. And so if it had been someone, let's say someone that was already, you know, maybe a, a, a white person or someone a Chinese person, someone that wasn't black, someone that wasn't from the hood, someone that didn't experience the poverty that I did, and they did this for me, wouldn't have been as impactful. Because in my mind, I was like, oh, that's them, not me. Right. But now here this family is, and they're from the projects, right? And he's from Brooklyn, my godfather from Brooklyn. And they took me in. And yeah, first time walking in the house, it did something to me. And what age was that? I had to be about 14. Wow. So, Roberta, I have a question Mm -hmm. that is in line with what you just said. Do you feel that people have to hit rock bottom before they affect change in their lives? Um, Anyone that's listening to this podcast, no. (laughs) But prior to, I think people may think that. I think, I know it's a choice. And this is why I'm saying anyone listening to this podcast anyone that's listening, it is truly a choice that many people think you don't have. So the answer, you don't have to hit rock bottom. But do most people hit rock bottom? Yes. It's a choice still, though. I, um, one of the questions that I have is, is uh, it's in line. I, I did some reading in your book. and okay. I, um, So a lot of it... Um, it, it really, you really did tell a, a great story. I think about the building of who you are. Mm. Um, so, I think a lot of times in, in poverty, yeah, you're in survival mode. Yes. So, what was your real switch? Like, what was the moment? Was now was that the moment, or is it another moment that that switch of survival just left and you started to want to strive? And you know what? That's an, an amazing, great question. Here it is. Your mind is so powerful. And even in writing my book, I suppressed. I didn't realize how much I suppressed until I wrote the book. Drew, do you know I had to fact check my own book? That's wow. how much I suppressed. The part about being in a homeless shelter in my, in my um, aunt's house next door. I literally got in the car to look at the shelter and look at the house next door. So your mind can suppress, right? It can suppress thing, things because of survival mode. Now, what happened is 
it was my son. If you read my book, it was my son because of the level of poverty, right? His, his father was a hustler. He was a drug dealer. Like, my first boyfriend was killed gunpoint from my house. And here I am giving birth to this little brown boy. Like, what did I have to offer him? I had nothing to offer him. I had nothing except generational poverty. And I looked into his future. And so for parents and to people who are listening to this podcast, look in the eyes of your children and look into their future. And you will see it's directly related to you. And because I was able to see that, I couldn't give up because in my heart of a heart, I felt that if I gave up on him, that I would lose him to what I knew my life was about, which is plagued and poverty. So I was in a hustle mentality. So there was no plan B. The problem is that we give ourselves too many plan Bs. There was no plan B, plan A, and that was to figure out how to break this poverty curse over my son, which meant I had to go to school, so I'm a hustle mentality. It was no excuses. I didn't have a, a car, so I was catching a bus, a hustle mentality. The bus got too expensive, so I had to save for a bicycle, a hustle mentality. No babysitter put him in the back of my in the back of the the um the classroom with his peanut butter in his in his little cards, a hustle mentality. We give too many excuses right now. I don't got a babysitter, I stay home. That's an excuse, that's a reason to fail. And my mindset was like, that is not acceptable. And so that hustle mentality followed me all the way when I made my first investment. And that investment that I made, it wasn't that I was like, oh, I wanna get into real estate, I wanna be this real estate guru. It was survival. I couldn't afford the apartment that I bought the four-family house in. And people think you need money to buy a four-family house. That's not it. You need the strategy. And so I had that hustle mentality. And then now it's like I wanted to um, uh, not just to have a four-family house. I needed a backyard. So it's a hustle mentality. Hustle, hustle, hustle. I needed to be home with my daughter. So I needed a hustle mentality. I couldn't work in New York. So I hustle, hustle, hustle until I built this empire and I'm still hustling. And it came when WFSB came and did a rags to riches story on me. My birthday's Christmas day. And they needed a feel good story and they heard about this girl. And they came to, the, to my office and they did a story about my life and how I was impacting so many people in the real estate industry and in mindset. And they needed a feel good story. And when the person at the, the interviewer said, when they left, the name of the story was New Haven Mother Builds Lucrative Business. And I was okay with that. Because until then, I'm like blending in, but I'm in a hustle mentality. But when I woke up in the morning, my phone is like, ting. And they was like, congratulations, nice story. It's like, ting. I was like, oh, that's, that's good. Ting. And another one was like, oh, that's what's up. I saw you last night on the news. I'm like, oh, okay, so I'm getting this love. And then I get a ting with the question marks. I'm like, what's that? Then I get a ting with oh wow really and I'm like what's wrong with these people then they send a screenshot and it says New Haven mother becomes a millionaire by investing in real estate that's two different titles I was in hustle mentality and can I tell you that I didn't even really sit back and realize the impact until that article and until when I walked out my door after that article being sworn by people asking me how did I do it and I was forced to really feel like, give them an answer. How did I do it? And that's how I came up with mindset. Not because I was a good person. There's a lot of good people out here. Not because I was saved and go to church. There's a lot of people who go to church. It was mindset. So that switch, um, that hustle mentality, one, it never fell off. But I didn't recognize what I built until after it was built. And maybe I look at it and say, you know, Maybe I believe that was God's way of keeping me humble. And at the same time, me and God had this thing going on, right? I'm like, I, I knew I made millions, but it was between me and God. It was like he pulled the cover off, but I'm okay with it right now because I understand it's for such a time as this. So I've never left that hustle. It was just, I just didn't know I, what I did until I looked back and was like, what? Yeah, yeah that's me. Yeah. That's pretty dope. Yeah. Let me pinch myself. Right. And now let me go buy the house so I can stop worrying about what people think about me. And then I just like did what I did. On our last podcast, we talked about uh, success versus significance. Mm -hmm. And, you know, in that, we are striving for ourselves to be better, but you don't know who you touch along the way. Yes. And it sounds like on your journey, personally, 
you've touched so many people outside of you know on outside yeah. without even realizing that. Yeah. You know, how do you feel? How do you feel about that as far as the uh, the people you've touched and you know what would be some nuggets you would like to leave them with? Um, my cousin and I was having this conversation. I said. Um, when it's, when it's a great responsibility and that I don't take lightly now, now that I'm intentional about everything I do, I'm not just haphazard. I'm laser focused. I'm not taking every interview. My cousin called, I jump on a plane. I'm here. That's different. I mean, he's, he's my, his family. I'll do what I have to do, but I don't take any interview. I don't just do that. I'm intentional. And so with that being intentional, um, I feel like it's a responsibility. And now I have this, this responsibility to be the light. See, if I was, and I, I, I just have to go here. If I was a white man who was given a silver spoon in your mouth, I wouldn't, you could look at me and look past me. But when I look like you, when I come from you, when I come from the bottom, you can't look past it. You know, it's like a, in your face. So I have a responsibility. And so now with that responsibility, I have this new mindset. And the mindset is, this world, we're all in this world for a purpose. Purpose is plural. And I will not, I repeat not, leave this world until this world knows my name and until I know that I have impacted as many people I can humanly and spiritually impact that I cannot number. So I will not be a blip on a radar. I will not be that because I'm born for purpose. I rose from the ashes for purpose. So it's bigger. I'm not just, oh, he, 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 I'm not. No, 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 no. I got a purpose. And that's why I'm here. So I don't take it lightly. Roberta, I, I want to back up mm -hmm. uh, to something you said earlier about um, having your first child, mm -hmm. looking into his eyes and realizing that, uh, you you were gonna provide more for mm -hmm. him. I, uh, we were talking the other day. I, I feel like sometimes people use their children as motivation. Mm -hmm. I think other times they use them as excuses. Exactly, okay. crutch. Mm -hmm. Right, mm -hmm. and and I think there's a balance. That Brandon always relates everything back to family, and mm -hmm. and those that have listened know he's got five girls. Mm -hmm. um, I've got a two year old son. What? maybe what advice do you have for somebody who's trying to maintain that balance? Because I think as a parent, there's some people that think, okay, well, I, I'm spending a lot of time at home with that per with, with my child. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm being a good mother, but they're not providing the lifestyle because of that. And and you didn't allow excuses to get in the way. You mentioned taking him to class with you mm -hmm. and putting him in the back of the room. So what's, what is that balance? Here's the thing. It, it's, that's a good question, but there's not a good, a straightforward answer for that because is, is we are a conglomerate of the environment of which we're in. This is why Brandon says family. Um, people say, well, how, what made you different from your brothers and sisters? And I really had to think about that. What made me different is um, I was homeless. I was put in a shelter. I was given a different environment. You see, there's there's a difference. So I had more to pull from. You can only pull from what's inside of you. If it's not inside of you, you don't have it to pull from. So if no one was ever taught about a balance, if you were just taught about um, having to um, provide and you're just a provider, you're provide, provide, that's all you're going to do. If you weren't taught about uh, you're only going to pull out what you have inside of you. So... Again, the people who are listening to this podcast, you're illuminating your thought process. So you do have to understand that there's a balance. And who is to determine what is a good parent? There's no blueprint for that. There's no book for that either. So um, balance, that's, 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 that is not a straightforward answer except to understand that we should set our children up to be better than us. Our children should excel much more than us. So if you're not intentional about teaching your children well, by default, you're going to teach them poverty. It's just a default. Do nothing and poverty will repeat itself. That's it. So if you look from that mindset, then you do what you got to do for it. But if you do nothing, poverty going to repeat itself. All right. So say um, 
you made the switch. Mm-hmm. All right, you 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 got yourself out of poverty mindset. Mm-hmm. Um, how do you keep yourself out of there? Mm, good. Like what are the, what are the things that you did to keep yourself from getting sunk back into that place that's that's so common to us? That's that's good. That comfort zone. I call it a comfort zone your broke zone. Your comfort zone is your broke zone. Anytime you're comfortable, something's broken. And so you 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 always I live I live my life on two extremes all the time. I got a whole lot of major, major stuff happening. I got a whole bunch of major crazy stuff happening. So I, at extreme. So it keeps me balanced. But I envision if you envision this, I'm a, I'm a visual person. I'm a garden. I'm not a gardener. I do not have a green thumb, but I do know enough to know that if you garden, you have to pluck out the weeds. And if you pluck out the weeds, imagine the the garden to be your mind. And you pluck out the weeds because now you're saying, I'm going to develop this positive mindset. I'm going to develop this millionaire mindset. I'm going to create wealth and I'm going to do this and I'm going to break generational curses. I'm going to do this. So you're plucking out weeds. Now, if you don't go back to the garden and continually pluck the weeds out, the weeds are going to grow back. That's just natural. And this is what happens in our mind. So it's a constant thing. I constantly remind myself. I do affirmations. I pray. I remind myself that I'm here for a purpose. I remind myself that, you know, this this wealth and this, this abundance thing that I'm living in, it ain't for me. This is for an example of what God can do as an example of for what people need. So I, I remind myself that this is a daily, not even daily, Brandon. It is a constant, constant, constant um, thing that I have to do all the time, all the time. Always have to be there because, like I said, you have these thoughts. They, they don't go away. You just manage them. You know, it don't go away because your, your past is your past. It's just what's dominating so it is a conscious decision every single day. It's a conscious decision. Roberta, I know, I know for me, um, as things have changed over the course of my life, oftentimes mm-hmm. my circle has changed. Mm. <laughs> um, and for, be- for better or for worse at times, um, and, and those are, that's difficult. I would have, I'm, I'm, you and I haven't talked about this, but yes, I'm venturing right. to say that you probably are not associated with all the same people you were back at 17 years old. And I think sometimes people that maybe are stuck in, whether it's the poverty mindset or whatever cycle they're in, that's mm-hmm. part of what's hard to break away because mm-hmm. you're typically not getting a lot of support from those people. Mm-hmm. Um, how important is your circle? The important is extremely, um, your circle is extremely important. Um, Money, the amount of money that you make is not going to be far different from the circle that you surround. I think it's like a $10,000 difference from the circle. Look at the people you hang around and then check their amounts. You're going to be in that realm with as it relates to money. Also, as it relates to mindset, you know, negativity is contagious. And so if you're trying to have a positive outlook on life, you're trying to make this shift, you can't be around negative people. And unfortunately, you're going to have people who you thought were your friends and then they really are secret haters and they want to live your life. And so they're going to you know, they're going to be who they were designed to be. Even Jesus had Judas's. So is my circle the same? Absolutely not. Um, I had a, a friend that I thought was a friend of a friend of a friend of a friend. And then, then she said, somebody told her she was Gail. She's like, I don't want to be Gail. I was like, and I'm giving her five. I was like, you Gail? Yeah, I'm old. Like, I'm like loving it. And she's like, I don't want to be Gail. I want to be Oprah. Okay. <laughs> right. So... People will show you who they are. You just believe them. And yes, my circle has definitely gotten smaller, but it's gotten larger. And let me explain. This is the birth of a millionaire mindset sisterhood. What I knew for sure is that is that if anyone and being focused with my purpose, if anyone was going to be successful, you had to be in an environment conducive for success. And so I decided to create a sisterhood faith based because that's all I know. Faith bases are devoted to breaking what we call the curse of poverty over our lives and the lives of our loved ones. So we share this mentality that I'm talking about. We teach that. I teach the mentality that we talk about. And so my circle, you know, you know, people who come over and hang out at my house. Yeah, yeah, that's tight. But oh, my circle is big. <laughs> yeah, but I, I absolutely agree with what you're saying. Your circle is envi- your environment is important. So here's here's a good question I feel like uh, people need to hear. There's a lot of people who live in abundance mm-hmm. and lead out of poverty. 
And I think poverty, the mindset of poverty is about necessity survival. There are a lot of people who lead groups of people and keep them around because they need them, Mm -hmm. not because they necessarily have the people they want. Mm -hmm. They kind of like a government creating dependency. Creating that, dependency. Power mm-hmm. in that. Like uh, in, in our industry, yeah. uh, a lot of times we lead people who we normally wouldn't even hire yeah. because we need them, so to speak. Um, how is How important is it to stand your ground and know what it is that you need and you want as a leader? Um, and not lead out of necessity, but lead in the, and, and be comfortable with going through the storm uh, and getting to where you where you need to be. I will almost say that anyone that leads from poverty doesn't have a heart of a leader. There's a difference. You can lead because you have people following you, but that doesn't mean you have the heart because a leader creates leaders. If you're in a, but you, you create leaders, you, that's what you do. You never hold a person down. And so that's where I would kind of, you know, I, I would say that, but it is, necessary to be transparent I think you know the to show what it really took to get to where you are I think you don't want to paint a picture of oh everything is good and I'm here and this is this is beautiful at the top of all of this stuff where you don't show the, the struggle and that's why people love my book Poverty Curse Broken because I showed the struggle and let me tell you that's probably a quarter of the struggle <laughs> <laughs> Same people won't read 1200 pages <laughs> no, we're gonna have a sequel but it is important for leaders and so if there are any leaders that are listening to this podcast i'm gonna say you have to lead as an example with transparency and humility and to always give um from a positive standpoint not from a negative, from a wealth perspective, a wealth mindset, not a poverty mindset. But leaders create leaders. And so my follow-up to that is that because you said from uh, um, obviously positivity, right? Yes, from positivity. Um, and one thing about poverty is that you expect failure and rejection. Poverty mindset, most people in poverty expect people outside of their immediate circle to reject them Mm -hmm. or for them to fail at something because of where they're from or whatever. They expect that. Um, But how important is it, like you said, to overcome and what mechanisms can you use for those people who are close to you? Because that could be the most detrimental thing. In in reading your book, uh, a lot of the things that seemed like it hit the most coming off the page was those people that were close. Mm -hmm. Um, That failure and that rejection sometimes hits a lot harder. Um, not cause you, it's like you expect it, but it's Mm -hmm. still like, talk to people about overcoming that and using that as fuel, I guess. Mm -hmm. So one is you, when you are in a battle of life, you have to realize it's you and God in it. It's not these people. Right. And so their opinions cannot stop you. Their opinions cannot hinder, hinder you. The only thought process that can stop you is your own. That's it. So if your thought process is rejection and you move off of rejection, you're going to get rejected. And then you'll be like, see, I told you so. But that's because you moved off of your your thought process of rejection. So it's about shifting your paradigm. And it's about shifting, saying, you know what, their thoughts, I'm going to say, okay, and I'm going to be respectful. But they're not going to stop me from doing what I believe in my heart to do. It has to be an internal switch. It has to be, it has to come from the inside out. Roberta, you spoke about the millionaire mindset of sisterhood. Millionaire mindset of sisterhood, yes. Why stop at sisterhood? Because Mm -hmm. I believe we can all learn from everyone. I agree. And um, the sexual orientation of where the message is coming from should be completely irrelevant. Okay, of course, coming from a man. I, I mean, I, and, and I say that I say that in in terms of a wise man learns from a fool, a fool learns from no one. All right, so I I take I'm listening to you this morning, mm-hmm. and I'm taking all of these gems. Yeah, and I feel that I, I feel that you, you want to be part of the sisterhood. I want to be I want to be part of the sisterhood. Yeah, I know. exactly. Yeah, <laughs> but I, I want that. I want that in my life. Yeah, but you're like, well, wait a minute. Why can't I have that? <laughs> Why Absolutely. can't I get that gem? Well, are it's, you getting them right now? Absolutely. So what it was was the complaint? Because it's sisterhood. <laughs> okay. So let me explain something to you. 
when I get that question very often, and I promise you a brotherhood would be coming, but I'm waiting for my Boaz. All right, when he come. <laughs> but there's a brotherhood coming, and it's coming in the right time. It's just the right man got to be right here. So when he come, then we we're going to work on it. But here's the thing, is that I remember when I was starting a sisterhood. And the sisterhood, it, again, it's part of my purpose, right? And so the the I was in New Jersey, and I was in Barnes and Noble, and I'm meeting with the women, and I'm just telling them about how we need to stick together as women. We're powerful, and all this stuff, this mindset stuff, right? That you love, that you get in any way, even <laughs> if you're not in the sisterhood, right? Right? Okay. And so um, I want to be an honorary member, by the way. <laughs> we, you know what? We we're gonna talk about that. Okay. Um, we're gonna invite you to our five year anniversary. That's happening in Connecticut. I really will invite the whole team. And so um, so I'm in there. I'm talking. And you know how I get. I'm just like, come on, we got to do this thing. And, I, I, you know. and there was this um, Muslim guy that was off to the right. And he, you could tell him looking back. You, he just kept looking back. You know when people just like, you, you talking and you're like, I'm not talking to you, but you're like in my business, right? And so <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at him turn. But he, was, he, he had a nice spirit about him. I said, um, sir, do you? do you have something that you want to say? Because it was obvious. And he stood up. He says, yes, ma'am, I do want to say. He was like, what you're teaching these women, it's amazing. And he says, let me tell you something. You can teach a man something, and you have changed that man. But when you teach a woman something, you have changed the nation, and you have changed generations. And what I know about a woman is she gets something, she's bringing it home to her husband. And she's bringing it home to her children. And so it's a trickle-down effect. And you start right where you're most impactful with. And it branches out. A brotherhood's coming. It's already in the making. We just need to boaz around. (laughs) All right. (laughs) So, but that does not stop you from following me following the sisterhood, getting the messages, listening to the books, listening to the podcasts. It doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. So, you know, if, if I'm getting something feeding me from a brotherhood, I'm at the table. I'm I a agree. sponge. It doesn't matter. So you, you could be an honorary member. Woo-hoo. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> I'll be there. Yes. Yes. So we've obviously talked pretty much all about mindset uh-huh. this morning yep. and how important that is. I think if somebody is listening and, and maybe a, a, upon listening to this, they've decided I'm going to change that mindset. Mm-hmm. I think some people operate under a false pretense that it, it just naturally happens. Um, that it's not something that you have to be so diligently focused on. And I know that you do. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I remember not long after I had started in our business, I, I was, uh, venting one day to mm-hmm. my to my father and he said are you done and I said well yeah I guess and he said all right well now I've got to go find 10 positive things to offset this negativity that mm-hmm. you just gave me mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and it and it kind of dawned on me that sometimes we don't realize the negativity in our life that's affecting us so mm-hmm. maybe what are some tangible things that you do personally or that you recommend to 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 um maintain that mindset or mm-hmm. to, or to, to create it in the first place is that you have to um study people who work in that mindset realm so people study me you know I study other people um I also journal so I constantly write every if not every day every other day I constantly write affirmations and I'm careful consciously careful about the words and the way that I speak words out of my mouth. You can say the same thing two different ways. One be from a a spirit of negativity or fear or from a spirit of faith and positivity, the same exact thing. Um, You can say, um, um, I do, I, I hate coming to work late. Right. Um, is coming from a place of negativity. I hate coming to work late. It's not a bad thing, but it's giving out negative energy. Um, or you can say, when I come to work late, it doesn't make me feel like my best, but when I get here, I'm happy. You follow me? It's just offsetting. So it's being very even intentional about the words that you speak. So it's conscious. When you make that shift, you got to study people. You have to study yourself. 
And then you have to be conscious about the words that come out of your mouth. Your words truly have power. How do you recommend somebody studies herself? Um, study themselves. You have to be in time. Okay, so good. So we all have um, energy. We're energy. We're beings. Beings are energy. And so this that's such a good question. I like that. Virtual, not virtual. You're here. High five. So <laughs> here's the thing. You have to be in tune with your energy. You know how you feel. You know how you feel. If you feel, if you're in here and you're angry, you, that doesn't come out your mouth, but you feel it. That's a negative energy inside of you. If you pay attention to how you feel in the inside, you have to stop it. And you know how to calm yourself. And you can shift the narrative. So that is how you do it. That's, that's powerful. That right there, we could take the mic and drop that thing. If you get in tune with your own energy, you'll know how to monitor yourself. Do you think, so talking about on, on your way up, mm -hmm. all the naysayers, yeah. the, the, <laughs> um, the, the, the people that were not supportive. Correct. How did you, I think it's important that you don't dwell on that energy. I mean, you, you making that point because, mm -hmm. cause I feel like that's sometimes what people, they get so angry at the mm -hmm. person that's not in their corner. That's not supportive. The person that did them wrong. Yeah. What's your advice on how do you move past that? Um, what you have, there's a couple of things. One, you have to make life bigger than you. So when life is bigger than you, you, you have a, be, a, um, more push. So what I mean is like by my, when my son, my son was my reason he was bigger than me. So I, I couldn't, their opinions couldn't matter. Um, I, the other thought process is, you know, people are on our life. They're not necessarily every person in your life is not a foe every person in your life is not a friend but every person in your life is a lesson so if you look at it from a lens of I don't need you to be my friend just what lesson did you come here to bring me what's the lesson so look at people as lessons what 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 if that person is like your your husband your wife that mm -hmm. person that's supposed to be mm. your partner, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And she's she may not be um, consciously being that naysayer, but she's, you know, trying to protect you with quotations. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, God give me wisdom. <laughs> Here's the thing. So You done messed up. You picked the not, wrong person. Not, yeah. <laughs> Here's the thing. A person can only give you what's inside of them. So if they don't have inside of them this mind, this mindset of positivity, and if they have inside their, them a mindset of negativity, they can only give it to you even though it's coming from a place of what they perceive as love, right? So we, we understand that, but it's also about bringing awareness. So if you are married to this person, then it's about bringing awareness to what's happening. Just like Drew said, the father, his father says, so now that you said all this negativity, let me go do some positivity to, to neutralize it. For one negative comment, it takes... Um, 10 positive comments to neutralize one negative thought. So imagine all the negative thoughts over the life and the things that have to happen. The other thing is if your spouse is the one that is um, negative is that there's ways of, of leading by example. You lead by example. Um, you can turn the radio on and you can put Roberta Hosky on, on and listen to her millionaire mindset and just play out like you listening to it. And when she and she's going to be like, girl, if you don't get it together. <laughs> <laughs> so it's about wisdom. It's about wisdom on how you deal with it. But then ultimately, it's, um, you know, you, you got to make sure that you have the right spouse. And that's at the same time. Mm -hmm. I feel I feel that, um, you know, people's mindset over time changes. Mm -hmm. So you're in to piggyback off of what Brandon was saying, mm -hmm. you know, you, you guys could have started off at the same place uh, among, you know, and having that same journey, mm -hmm. but somewhere in that path, you know, something has happened mentally mm -hmm. or physically to that person. Mm -hmm. And they now have taken that left turn. Yeah. And that's where the rub now starts to begin. And obviously you can't fire your spouse. Mm hmm. Uh, and you know, you can only com combat, but so much negativity. Correct. So how do you bring them back or what, what would be your, your key to leave people with as far as, you know, how to keep relationships or, or your, you and your spouse on the same 
track moving forward so that way you guys can both get to your de- get to that destination mm-hmm. so i um as a husband and wife um i think that it's important that you know family that prays together stays together you all supposed to study together you also like i said should um be intentional about learning I would just say the wealth mindset. Sometimes it's easier. It's all how you package it, right? You can say, you got a poverty mindset. You need to get that poverty mindset. And it goes back to the way you, the words. Or you can say, you know, let's study the wealth mindset. That's wisdom. You know what? Let's study the wealth mindset. There's so many people who have been wealthy. There's so many people that have these powerful stories. How did they do it? I heard success leads blueprints. Let's study these blueprints. It's all about wisdom, and it's all about how you articulate it. Let's study the wealth mindset. And if your spouse is your spouse, they're going to sit down and do it with you. And if there's a push there, then that's something else you got to deal with that. It's a deeper issue. Um, Before we got, you know, finished, I just wanted you to hit on that acronym that you was telling us about before um, the podcast. Oh, yeah. So... TFAR, this is my acronym. Um, We're all after great results in our life. Uh, We're looking at the results in our life. That's why we're saying, is it poverty? Is it prosperity? Where did I get here? How did I get here? What did I do? You know, these are the results. I'm working here. I have this business here. I'm not. Or these things. We have these results in our life. And so if if you can take this journey with me right quick, imagine walking into my grandfather used to take us to an apple orchard so imagine going into an apple orchard and you see all of these beautiful apple trees and you look on the trees and you notice that there's a particular tree that has fruit on it and the trees around it have red nice red ripe apples and then there's this particular tree and this tree the apples are green and they're tan and they have like holes in it and it's rotted and it's not looking good so now imagine the tree the results of that tree are these fruit that's withered right now go with me tfar is the acronym t f a r is the acronym t f a r so the thoughts we have dictate the feelings that's why I said be in tune with your feelings your thoughts dictate your feelings it is impossible to have a thought without a feeling that's why I'm talking about my life and I still get the feeling that's why the tears still roll up because I cannot have a thought without a feeling you cannot think about something happy and not smile you cannot think about something that's sad and not get grieved you it's impossible to separate your thought from your feelings So your thought dictate the feelings you have right now. You may be inspired. You may be happy. You're feeling the energy that I'm giving you. It's impossible to to change the thoughts from the feelings. But guess what? Those feelings dictate your actions. The way you feel is going to dictate what you do. I feel appreciated, so I am going to do this for you. Or I feel Like I'm scared and nervous, so I'm going to stay here and I'm going to shut down. Or I feel like I'm going to fail, so I'm not going to try. Or I feel like I'm going to win and I'm going to go out there. I feel like it is going to cause me to make an action. So your thoughts dictate the way you feel. What you feel dictates the way you act. But it's those actions that dictate the R, which is the results. So the results we have in our life all are dictated based on that invisible thing, which is the thought. Now back to the tree. Now imagine that that tree is you. And now imagine that that fruit off of that tree are your results. They don't look red like everyone else's. They're not ripe like everyone else's. You're in this tree and you're seeing people walk in abundance, but why is mine lack? Right? You can't go to Lowe's or Home Depot and go get some red paint and start saying, I'm going to paint my results. And this is what we do when we want to have the appearance of wealth when we broke. We want to appear to be wealthy. We want to drive the cars and you don't got a house or a garage to park it in. That's buying the red paint at Lowe's and painting a rotten apple. 
So in order to really change that tree, we got to get to the root of the problem, the roots and the invisible things. It's the invisible things that make every visible thing in this world. And it's those things that we cannot see that produces the red apples or the rotten apples in our life. So if you have rotten apples in your life, if you have a lack, if you have poverty, if you if you're you're missing, if you're if, if there's something missing in your life, those are rotten apples. But those rotten rotten apples are the results of something that's going on inside of you. And you have the ability. Listen to me. You have the ability to change every circumstance in your life. There is nothing impossible. There's nothing impossible. You want red apples? Change the inside. Change the invisible. Change your thoughts. Because it's the thoughts that dictate the feelings, the feelings that dictate the actions, and that is how you got to this result in your life. Stop looking at the results. Look at the way you think. Amen. Amen to that. Mm-hmm. Hey, I just man. took you to church. You just, oh, oh, my God. I needed <laughs> I some about, church this morning. I was about to queue it up. <laughs> Pass the offering you know? bucket. <laughs> yeah. Got my church pants on and everything. Right? I needed some church in my life this morning. <laughs> I can't help it. It just is it's who I am. It's who I am. <laughs> well, Roberta, listen, this has been fantastic. We greatly appreciate your time and the energy and the investment that you've made into us this morning Absolutely. along with our listeners. Um as we discussed how important mindset is, if someone wants to follow you um, to maintain that mindset, where do they where do they find you? Well, they definitely can find me on social media. They can follow me on Facebook, um, Roberta Hosky with the Blue Star. I do have Dr. Roberta Hosky, a.k.a. Miss Millionaire Mindset. If they want to um, learn more about the Millionaire Mindset Sisterhood, um, we also are on Facebook, and you can go to mmsisterhood.com. Um, I am also on Instagram, so you can follow me on IG. Um, and so in uh, YouTube, you can just go ahead and follow me on those social media platforms. What is your IG handle? Um, Dr. Roberta Hosky and with the Blue Star. Okay. And of course, go pick up a copy of the book. Of course, Poverty you gotta Curse get Broken. pick up the book <laughs> "Poverty Curse Broken: The Roberta Hosky Story." Available all over the world right now. But if you want your autograph copy, go to my personal website at www. I don't know why I still say www. <laughs> but uh, connectwithroberta.com. Connectwithroberta.com. Go to merchandise and you can get your autograph copy. I do suggest anyone listening and is inspired by the story that you get the book so that you can get more of the details. Of of uh, my life and um, understand that it is possible. Mm -hmm. Great. Y'all have a good week. If you got 1% of value from this podcast, do us a favor. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Tell your friend, tell your coworker. Until we meet again. Lead one.